Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In this segment, we're going to cover the tissues of the lip, cheek, oral mucosa, and the tongue. We're going to pay particular emphasis to the epithelium that lines these tissues. I want to first show you the outer surface of the lip. Let's look under this now under low power. Now you'll notice here that the epithelium is a stratified squamous epithelium and it's keratinized. You can see some keratin here flaking off on the outer surface of the lip. Now also notice there's hair follicles. There we go. Now these are hair follicles here. Now I want to scan in to the inner surface of the lip. And let's do that. That's some fatty tissue here. The bulk of the lip, of course, is made up of skeletal muscle. That's abicularis oris. And on the inner surface here, we have the non-keratinized or moist stratified squamous epithelium. That's the inner surface. Now let's come up here to the red part of the lip, the vermilion part. You'll notice there's a change in the connective tissue papilla. They seem to invaginate the epithelium more. And of course, there's capillaries in there. Another characteristic of this red part of the lip is that the surface cells contain a different kind of protein. Rather than keratin, they contain a lydin. So there's three things that make it the red part of the lip. There's the surface cells containing a lydin. There's the thinness of the epithelium. And then there's these connective tissue invaginations carrying capillaries that have, of course, red blood cells in them. Now let's look at a higher power at this epithelium to verify what we've just said. Here's the epithelium of the red part of the lip. Large connective tissue papilla carrying the vessels in there. And then look at the surface cells here now. They contain the elidin. And the epithelium is real thin, especially where you have these connective tissue invaginations. That's the red part of the lip. Can you see the glassy-like appearance of the surface cells? Makes it kind of transparent. Now, I'll scan quickly down here to the inner surface of the lip. Now, the epithelium, see the surface cells? They still have nuclei in them. This is moist or non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Lines all the inside of the cheek and the insides of the lips. Surface cells still contain nuclei. Now let's see if we can scan. I'll scan rapidly out to the outer surface of the lip. Let's see. Here we are. Now, for sure, you notice that the outer surface is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Now, the cheek actually has the same kind of configuration as a lip does. It has epithelium on the outside being stratified squamous keratinized, then you've got muscle tissue on the inside of it, and on the inside lining of the cheek that's in the oral surface, we have the moist stratified squamous epithelium. So that covers really the histology 
of the lips and the cheeks. In the cheek, of course, many times you'll have a larger accumulation of fatty tissue, the buccal fat pad. Now the next tissue I want to cover for you is the tongue, and we'll look at that now under low power. I want to show you the ventral surface or the under surface of the tongue first. Now that epithelium is just the same as lines the inside of the lips and cheek. It's a moist stratified squamous epithelium. Now let's look at that tissue. Here we have it. On the left is the epithelium. And at this power, you can see the kind of epithelium. The tissue on the right, then, is all the skeletal muscle of the tongue. It goes every which way in the skeletal muscle tissue there. Uh -huh. Now we're coming to the side of the tongue. And this is the kind of epithelium lining the sides and the dorsum of the tongue. Okay, that's the upper surface of the tongue. And this is composed of two kinds of papilla. There's the filiform papilla. There's a group of them here. These ones that have sharp keratinized points on them. Those are filiform. And these that are mushroom shaped are called fungiform papilla. There's two prominent ones right here in the field. Now, of course, there's many, many more of the filiform papilla than they are of the fungiform. And you'll see some taste buds associated with the fungiform papilla. I'll show you that now under higher power. Here's a fungiform papilla at medium power. Notice the connective tissue core. And many of these invaginations here are going to contain taste buds. Now we'll go to another section and we'll get a good view of the filiform papilla. There's a fungiform papilla course to the left. And notice these filiform papilla. Those comprise the great majority of papilla in the tongue. See, they're pointed. Now, there's connective tissue down in here. And you see it's the epithelium that's pointed, keratinized, and it accounts for the rough surface of the tongue. Those are filiform papilla. Now I want to talk to you about the circumvallate papilla. These are found at the junction of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue and the posterior one-third. They're on the dorsum of the tongue. Now this area is the best place to look for taste buds because there's many taste buds around these circumvallate papilla. Now we'll go to a low power section and look at that. These are large papilla visible to the naked eye. And you'll notice that they have a moat, sort of like around a trough around the papilla. In the middle of the field, we have a circumvallate papilla. Lining the sides of this trough, we have numerous taste buds. And you can see them here as white, rounded-like objects. Now, these troughs are flushed out by a serous gland, the glands of von Ebner or the circumvallate glands. These are pure serous glands. And you can make out some of those here. And this is muscle tissue of the tongue below. Now I want to show you a high power of some taste buds. The oral cavity is above, and we have the connective tissue below. And there's three or four taste buds in the middle of the field. The taste buds are composed of two kinds of cells. There's sustentacular cells, supporting cells, these are, and there's neuroepithelium. The neuroepithelium, of course, are the receptors for taste. There's a pore 
opening here at the top to the oral surface of the tongue. Now you can make out these sustentacular cells and neuroepithelial cells with a special stain, and I'll show you that in another section. The sustentacular cells have large rounded nuclei, and here's one, and here's another. And the neuroepithelial cells, they're thinner cells, and they have a dark staining nuclei. And there's a prominent one right here. And you might be able to make out another one over here. This is a taste bud. The best place to find them is in and around the circumvallate papillae. And, of course, there's some associated with the fungiform papillae. That covers the epithelium on the tongue. Now I want to show you the epithelium lining the hard palate and the gingiva. This epithelium is stratified squamous epithelium and it's keratinized. That's in distinction to the other lining mucosa that we talked about before, lining the cheek and the lips, and that was moist stratified squamous. This is a keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Now the keratin increases with function. It's also called masticatory epithelium. I want to show you the epithelium now as it lines the oral side of the hard palate. Now if you'll notice here, we've got the oral surface to the right and the nasal surface to the left. And then there's bone in the middle. This happens to be a term fetus. And the epithelium isn't as keratinized as it would be with function. Now in the anterior part of the hard palate, we have ridges of tissue, and these are called rugae. There's one right here. And let's go posteriorly. Nasal epithelium to the left, and the hard palate epithelium to the right. Now we're starting to get some glands. These are going to be pure mucus glands, and I'll show them to you later at higher power. We're going posteriorly. Now we have the start of the soft palate. See? Bony tissue is gone. And we have a greater bulk of glands. And we should be coming into muscle tissue, yes. Now let's look at that under higher power, soft palate. The epithelium's to the right. It's not very keratinized. There's just a thin layer in this term fetus. Stratified squamous epithelium. Now underlying this epithelium is glandular tissue. You'll notice this is a pure mucus gland, the nuclei very compressed in the basal end of these cells. This is a palatal gland, one of the major salivary glands. Pure mucus gland. This is skeletal muscle tissue here. And we're going towards the nasal surface. And the nasal surface is lined by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells. That's the respiratory side. Now here you can see, this is the, still in the soft palate, there's some glands on the nasal side of the soft palate, and these happen to be some small mixed glands. And then there's muscle tissue, the bulk of the soft palate, and coming here there's mucous glands here, Let's get those in focus a little better. There we are. And the oral epithelium. Moist, stratified squamous epithelium. Let's scan back here quickly. We'll get back into the hard palate area. There's some mucous glands underlying the hard palate in the posterior part of that hard palate. See, here's the palatal bones themselves, 
and then there's some glands, mucous glands, and the epithelium again. Going further anteriorly, anteriorly, let's see now, still some glands there. Okay, then the glands are deficient, and we have the fatty area in the anterior two-thirds of the hard palate itself. That concludes a brief description of the epithelium lining the oral cavity, the lips and cheek. Let me just summarize some of that for you now. Lining the epithelium of the lips and the cheek on the outer surface we have of course keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. There will be associated hair follicles and sebaceous glands also. The vermilion part of the lip is composed of a tissue that has a thin epithelium. The surface cells contain a lidin. And then we have the deep penetration of the connective tissue papilla with the associated blood vessels, accounting these three factors for the red part of the lip. The inner surface of the lips and cheek are lined by a moist stratified squamous epithelium. It's called a lining epithelium. The tongue is unique in that on the surface, the dorsum surface, we have a papillated or epithelium containing mostly filiform papilla, occasional fungiform papilla, and in the posterior one-third, the junction of that posterior one-third with the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, we have the circumvallate papillae. There's many taste buds associated with those papillae, and then in the bottom of the troughs, in the connective tissue, we have a serous gland, these glands of the circumvallate papilla. Remember that the undersurface of the tongue is lined by the same kind of lining as the cheeks and the lips, a moist stratified squamous epithelium. The other kind of epithelium that we covered was the so-called masticatory epithelium. That's an epithelium that is keratinized, and that lines the gingiva and the oral surface of the hard palate. And in concluding, we went through the tissues comprising the hard and the soft palate. In the soft palate, we had on the oral surface, there is a, a moist stratified squamous epithelium, and it's composed, the bulk of it, of course, of skeletal muscle, and on the nasal surface, we had respiratory epithelium. There's some mixed glands on that nasal side. Coming further forward, we had the hard palate, and it's the hard palate that's composed of the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. That's on the oral surface. On the nasal surface, we have the typical pseudostratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells. That concludes our brief description of the oral tissues. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.